Week six for high school football brought a close to the season for a few conferences, which meant conference titles were on the line. Spanaway Lake with a chance to go undefeated in the PCL 3A if they could beat Lakes, a team that's run over the Sentinels for the past few years. An early fumble gave the Lancers a short field, and they took advantage. Leo Pulalasi goes in from three yards out. That's only the second touchdown Spanaway Lake has allowed all season, and the first time they've trailed in a game all season. Sentinels would tie it back up. Lancers try to answer in the second quarter. Justin Brennan having a fabulous season, but Spanaway Lake thrives on defense and they thrive on turnovers. Kiki McQueen is there for the pick and the momentum was starting to shift. Next drive, more defense from Spanaway Lake. Deviante Alexander breaks up the screen pass with a jarring hit to force another punt. But Lakes can play defense, too. It's why they finish first or second in this league nearly every year. Pula Lassi drills Dempsey James on the option for the stop, but Spanaway wasn't phased. As the rain picked up, so did their ground game. Josiah Wagner, a seven-yard TD to take the lead. Wagner went for 231 yards rushing and three touchdowns. Lakes never really had an answer. Dayton Crudup strips the ball. And Blake Ongaius recovers. The Sentinels finish 6-0 and earn their first conference title in 20 years thanks to a 35-7 win. Staying in 3A, up in Westco, a number of teams could go unbeaten, including Edmonds Woodway, sharing the field with Linwood in the early game of a doubleheader in Edmonds. The Royals had a tough time tackling Ryan Fahey, 23 yards like a bulldozer into the end zone to put Edmonds Woodway up by two scores. Linwood stayed in this game thanks to some turnovers. Noel Guguwehi with the sack and strip. Gavin Kincaid is there for the recovery for the Royals, but Linwood's offense couldn't follow it through. Julius Hudorf gets caught by Emron Abdul Qadir for the sack, and for a while this game turned into a punting festival before Linwood's defense forced another turnover. Warriors going for six, but John Miguel Hurtado gets the interception and just gets his foot in bounds, but in the end, way too much from the Warriors. They dominated the second half. Steele Swinton ran for 102 yards. Fahey went for 126. Edmonds Woodway improves to 4-0 with a 56-7 win. In 4A, it was a record-setting day and a moment that quarterback Sam Heward has waited four seasons to get to. Kennedy Catholic hosting Kentwood, and it didn't take long for Heward to get Kennedy in the end zone. Nice touch pass and good footwork by Junior Alexander to make it 7-0 early. 11 catches, 143 yards, and three scores for the future Arizona State Sun Devil. The Conks would fumble the ensuing kickoff, and Heward went right back to work. The backside screen, Jabez Tenai does the legwork, 35 yards for another touchdown. Kentwood with a chance to cut the lead in half in the second quarter, but Zeri Alexander sniffs out the quarterback keeper by Jackson Proctor, and JFK holds the Conquerors to just a field goal. After another Heward TD pass, the Lancers cap a 96-yard drive. Heward hits Tine again, nine catches, 155 yards, and his second touchdown of the day it was 27-3 Kennedy. Heward and the offense get so much attention, but head coach Sheldon Cross always quick to point out his defense. X Alexander reading it all the way for the interception and everything going right for JFK. As we mentioned, a record-setting day. Here it is. Heward becomes the all-time leader in career passing yards in the state of Washington, 13,226 yards, passing Brett Rippon, who set the record at Shadel Park back in 2014. After the game, Heward announced his prep career was over and he is headed to the Washington Huskies for spring football, but only after he completed 40 of 56 passes, 514 yards and eight touchdowns in this game, Kennedy is 3-0 after a 43-point win. The SPSL 4A could have ended up with a three-way tie atop the standings if Sumner could pull the upset on Graham Kapowson. GK led 28-0 before Sumner scored a pair of touchdowns in a comeback attempt. Then it became a defensive scrum. Bo Carlson stopped cold by Hunter Hill, and that was the tone of the second half. The Spartans could not afford to make these type of mistakes. A fumble in the fourth quarter recovered by Garrett Ott, and it set up GK with a short field on offense. Joshua Wood, play fake, pump, and pass to K. 
Cameron Sonnenfeld to make it a three-possession game. Carlson would have to leave with an injury for Sumner, and the Spartans' offense just couldn't click the rest of the way. A turnover on downs gave the rock back to Graham Kapowson. The Eagles drained the last eight and a half minutes off the clock. They finished a perfect 6-0 and and win the conference title in back-to-back -back seasons. I couldn't be more proud. Probably one of the best wins I've had in a while because some kids had key kids come up, gone, and we started out, you know, really, really fast. We knew what we were going to do. We were going to come out and just and just show what we can do. And um, we were down a couple guys. Guys stepped up. They made plays. When it came to the crunch time, we 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 came over top. Went on a few this year. Let's keep it going next year. It starts now. I mean, there's not much of an off season because we're going to be doing spring ball in June. So, you know, get the week off and let's start going again because we got to get ready for a, a big season next year. In Kinko 2A, just the second game of the short season for Lindbergh and Evergreen. Both teams looking for win number one. Elijah Garza lived in the backfield for Evergreen on the first two drives, disrupting Lindbergh's offense after an early touchdown. The Eagles, though, would add on. Blake Dompier facing a fourth and 13. He finds Chase Linkus. It's an 18-yard score and a 12-0 lead after a missed two-point conversion. Evergreen's offense struggled, but their defense did make plenty of stops in the first half. Taya Tuifua and David Martin combined on the sack. The problem was Lindbergh seemed to have more answers than they had questions. Dompier finds Linkus again, this time a big one, 52 yards for a 19-0 lead. And after a safety gave the ball right back to the Eagles, Dompier put Lindbergh in the end zone again. A three-yard flip to Setefano Sete for another touchdown. Lindbergh gets the win, 41-20. Back to 3A in the Metro League in Seattle on Friday night. Blanchett fired up to host an O'Day team who was coming off an upset loss to Seattle Prep. The Braves' defense was all over the field early. Colin Graves with a cast on his right arm, didn't matter, makes the big stop in the backfield. The Fighting Irish run game would start to click, and click it did. Jason Brown finds a gap, 16 yards for the opening score for O'Day, and their defense would follow suit. Mika Kassan shoots the gap perfectly for a three-yard loss. O'Day held Blanchett to minus nine yards rushing for the entire game. The pass rush wasn't too bad either. Braves trying to beat the pressure. Dane Camacho comes up with a sack on the next play. A seven-yard loss would stall the drive. Blanchett would finally catch a break after a fumbled snap on a punt. Henry Johnson calls his own number from the one-inch line. Three plays later, it's a one-yard keeper in the scorebook, and it ties the game up. O'Day regained the lead on the next drive and then built on it. Johnson picked off by David Demenzies. The Irish took it back to the ground. They ran for 265 yards as a team. Brown with five rushing touchdowns, tying Miles Gaskin for the team's single game record. Pretty good company to be in. O'Day improves to two and two with the win. Blanchett falls to one and three. Second game of a doubleheader at Seattle Memorial under the Space Needle and a good one between Garfield and Ballard. Quentin Jordan. Strong through the right side, 22-yard run gives the Bulldogs the lead with the opening touchdown. Ballard had some issues in the red zone early on. A fumbled snap on fourth and goal. Yamani Howell-Bradley comes up with a recovery and a big stop for the Bulldogs. The Beavers' defense, though, would make up for it. Dylan Gibb on the blitz gets a key sack on third down to force a punt. Ballard's offense would make the most of that chance on the next drive. Ryan Blocker finds Nowlin Iwaliko down the seam for a 19-yard touchdown. Nice grab. Iwaliko was all over the field offensively and on defense. Two drives later, Blocker goes back to work. This time, Kalen Johnson with the grab gets the foot down where it counts. It's a four-yard score, and the Beavers are back in the lead. This game closed throughout. E.J. Kamenong, freshman quarterback for the Bulldogs, big arm. Rally Canal hauls in a 31-yard strike for Garfield. The Beavers' defense was just a little bit better. A blocked extra point was the difference as Ballard edges Garfield 28-27. For more scores, go to Cairo7.com.